You got to understand here. You can come to here. You ready? You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We have uh, a statement on the issue, on the situation in Sondu market in Nyanza and also the, about the Kenyan mission to Haiti. This statement is going to be read on our behalf by Honorable Eugene Omarua. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. In parts of the country and the mayhem currently underway in Sondu, while the latest eruption of insecurity at the border of Kisumu and Kericho County, where scores of people have been killed, and many injured in Sondu, huge sections of the country are actually under siege. Al-Shabaab is having a field day killing our people, including soldiers in Lamu and in far-flung areas like Wajia and Mandera. Insecurity also continues to rage in sections of the North Rift, causing significant pain and loss of life. Let's make no mistake. The violence and mayhem in Sondu is not an ordinary disagreement between villagers. Big names are behind this violence. They include leaders and politicians from neighboring counties and in the national government. We view these latest incidents in Sondu as part of a long, off and on history of violence instigated by politicians who have on numerous occasions incited the different communities against each other and local leaders who have been implicated in these activities. The apparent bias, indifference, and helplessness of security officers in the area as violence has raged on clearly indicate that big names are behind the fighting and the mayhem in Sondu. In particular, we are demanding investigations to be carried out against individuals who have been implicated as sponsors of the violence, who include the Kericho County Governor, Dr. Eric Mutai. These leaders must abandon the expansionist tendency through which they are seeking to extend the boundary of Kericho County with a view of claiming Sondu Town. We are convinced that this violence is being sponsored by local politicians who have set their claim on part of Kisumu County during the envisaged boundary review that is coming soon. We strongly condemn the senseless murders prevailing in Sondu. We are also concerned over the mistrust that this violence is breeding between residents that is now taking a political dimension. We wish to assure the innocent residents of Sondu from either side of the border that we are in solidarity with them. We urge the residents to put down their arms and to embrace each other as brothers and sisters who have lived alongside each other for years. We are also appealing to the residents to resist and reject those inciting them to acts of violence and lawlessness that brings no value to the actors and the victims. We are calling on the government to immediately 
bring the violence to an end and to provide round the clock security to the residents of this area. The people behind this violence and mayhem must be identified, arrested, and made to account for their actions. We are concerned over the negative impact of this violence on livelihoods and economic activities in the area. Consequently, we are asking the government to provide support to the families that have been affected by this violence. Such support should include footing the medical bills for those who have sought treatment and helping with burials of those who have lost their dear ones. Beyond Sondu, we are concerned over the increase in terrorist activities in parts of the coast, particularly Lamu in Northeastern. Just about two weeks ago, several KDF soldiers aboard a Kenya Air Force chopper died in a crash within the terror-prone Boni Forest in Lamu. We believe this was an Al-Shabaab attack. Attacks by Al-Shabaab militants have become commonplace in Mandera and other parts of northern Kenya, with victims being police officers, teachers, farmers, ordinary residents, going about their daily routines. We must never forget that the government has so far failed to address various incidents of insecurity in the North Rift counties of Baringo, Elgeo Marraquet, and Laikipia. In these places, armed groups, bandits, and cattle rustlers continue to conduct raids on neighboring communities, destroy property, and cause massive displacement of people. These attacks are unacceptable and must come to an end. They paint a picture of a nation that is losing the battle to gangs and terrorists. We therefore find it strange while the country is clearly grappling with internal security problems, the Ruto administration is taking 1,000 police officers to Haiti to fight a war that is not of our own. On a territory that is far away, over 12,000 kilometers from Kenya. We cannot send 1,000 of our young men and women in uniform in harm's way over 12,000 kilometers away without the people of Kenya, through their elected representatives in parliament, having a say as to whether this is in our national strategic security interest or it's motivated by other interests. In this regard, we call upon parliament to immediately summon the CS of Interior, now that his defense counterpart appeared before the Senate yesterday, and he actually ducked this question. He passed the buck to his interior uh, counterpart. We want him to explain to Parliament and by extension the nation the following issues. One, why are we sending our officers to Haiti to protect Haitians while the security situation at home is deteriorating? and they are unable to protect lives and property of Kenyans in Sondu, in the North Rift, in Northeastern, in Lamu, and at the coast against gangs, cattle rustlers, bandits, and the resurgent Al-Shabaab terrorists who are slaughtering Kenyans day and night. Two, why deploy our police while the issue of Kenyan police brutality particularly in the recent anti-tax protests, which witnessed excessive use of force, killings, and gross violation of human rights, where 72 Kenyans lost their lives through police bullets, and thousands were wounded, and the matter is still live before the National Dialogue Committee at Bomas, which was sanctioned by Parliament. Some matters are before our courts, and some matters are still being considered by the Police Reform Task Force. Three, won't this be tantamount to exporting police brutality and abuse of human rights to our black Haitian brothers and sisters who are also protesting the illegitimacy of their president, just the way Kenyans were protesting and were clobbered by the same police? Four, Kenya 
has an impeccable liberation and pan-Africanist credentials and ties to the liberation movements in the Caribbean and all over the world. Would in sending our officers to Haiti, not at the request of our black Haitian brothers and sisters, but at the request of their president, whose legitimacy has been questioned by his people. Would in sending officers to Haiti taint our Pan Africanist ties to the Caribbean? Whose heroes, some of them, when you walk on the streets of Nairobi, we have our roads named after them. Gavi, Du Bois, Makonen, Padmore. All these were Caribbean leaders who, with our founding fathers, through the liberation movement, had ties. And now we are going to fight other people's wars. Five, are our police most of whom can't speak French or Creole, which is the local language there, uh, well prepared to undertake this high-risk mission in a completely different terrain. Are they properly prepared to go on this mission? Or is Ruto ready to sacrifice the innocent blood of Kenyans for American dollars or for international recognition? These are questions Kenyans are asking. We are therefore urging that uh, Ruto must stabilize and secure Kenya fast before thinking of sending our security people to what clearly looks like a mission impossible in a faraway country with whom we didn't have diplomatic ties until recently. We call on Parliament to demand oversight on this matter with a view of protecting the young men and women in uniform who are about to be taken to Haiti for a war that is not ours, and at a time when we need them back home to take care of their fellow Kenyans. As a country, we are actually under-policed. As you know, the recommended UN ratio, citizen to police ratio, is 1 to 400. In Kenya, we don't have enough police officers. Our ratio is 1 to over 1,000. We have immediate neighbors to Haiti, like America, that has a surplus. We, we don't even have enough. So these are some of the issues we want the people's representatives to summon the CS and on behalf of the people of Kenya to question the Haiti deal. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Unless you have some questions. Yes, we can take some questions. The parliament approval. Is it your position that your members in parliament will be opposing this when it's, uh, it comes before the house? Well, as you know, generally, Deployment of forces outside the borders requires parliamentary approval. As you know, when I was the Prime Minister and we took a decision, the Cabinet, to send our forces to Somalia, I took a motion to Parliament and it was approved, debated and approved by Parliament. Now, this is a similar case. We are sending out our troops of forces outside our borders. It must be approved by parliament. Just like the defense treaty that has been signed between our government and the government of the United States must also be taken to parliament and approved. Thank you so much, Seth Olale, Citizen TV. Do you think the latest concerns in regards to insecurity is going to have a negative impact or even derail the national dialogue? Well, the national the insecurity in the country is a matter of great national concern. 
everybody. We cannot just sit and watch as innocent Kenyans are being butchered in their homes. You've seen what is happening there in Sundu. Houses being touched, people being burnt inside their homes. This is something that is horrible. And you have noted, even seen a statement coming from the government. The, what we are doing here, we are demanding that the government should come clear and make a statement. And even a minister in charge of internal security would have gone to the scene to go and see what is happening. The fact that they are all silent and business as usual tells you that there is something that they know that other Kenyans are, and, and don't know. This is, a, is something that cannot be tolerated. Uh, the, the, the talks, of course, as you know, have now reached another stage where they are going to now uh, be debating the material that they have be before them. Um, so we, would, we don't want those talks to, to be affected by what is happening. But what we are doing is we are calling the government to action. The government is asleep. But Kenya is burning, and this is not right. I think we are done. Thank you very much for your time. We're sending statements to you shortly. Thank you.